The idea for Palincest came from visiting um, Lismore itself and I was really struck by the different histories of the town. But yeah, Lismore is still recognisable itself and how across the centuries there have been so many different um, stories and different things about the town. And so I was interested in um, time and location across time. Um, the word palimpsest means a document that um, was on vellum that um, is used once and then if they wanted to reuse it they'd scratch the ink off um, and that was called a palimpsest and it's since become used for um, architecture and rooms and a, a room that has one use and then it's completely reused for something else and the artists in the show are all responding to this in different ways, in their own ways. Some of the works are works that already existed and some are, are brand new. And each of them does something very different with the theme. Sometimes that um, interpretation is very clear and sometimes it's more personal to them. Um, also in the show there's some text written by um, Olivia Lang. And I asked Olivia to respond to the theme and it sits in the gallery and, and I hope that um, by reading it, it helps visitors to jump off to their own thoughts about time and their own thoughts about relationships across time. And then hopefully through the works they can think about things in a different way. So in the show we have um, seven artists. Um, so Martin Sims is an artist from California and um, her film Notes on Gesture has as its starting point um, this book on hand gestures um, and she took it and looked at how hand gestures from the past, how those gestures might have meaning now and how it might be completely um, meaningless now. And then also at the hand gestures we use and that we all understand um, I loved how it connected with the show because it's so clearly looking at something from the past and and um, seeing what it does now, seeing the kind of changes and the and the similarities. Charlotte Proger um, is completely obsessed with time. She 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 won the Turner Prize in 2018, and um, her work often looks at how time and our understanding of time really is. Uh, uh, very morphous thing but in the show um, we're showing four images of hers that um, are looking at um, it's like a visual palimpsest um, it's photographs of photographs but it's also what's in the photographs that are interesting too um, Zoe Leonard is an artist from New York she works mostly in photography um, and she's She's done a whole series of images of nature in urban situations and often that nature is climbing into, growing out, growing over, taking over what's human. And that really related to Lismore and to Ireland, to, to me, with how verdant um, nature is here and how if you left something for a couple of years nature would just take over and I, I, I love that idea that what we think is permanent actually it could, could completely go in a, a second. Um, Andrea Zittel has um, created a really special project for us. Um, she's made uh, some personal panels which are versions of her uniforms. She's an artist who, um, who whose artwork is her life. Um, and the way she lives, the building she lives in. She lives in an encampment in a desert in California. And she, she weaves, and so we got her to design a tweed. It's the first time she's made a tweed. And um, we had that tweed woven at Malloy & Sons in Donegal. And then the garments made at, uh, by the Tweed Project in Galway. Um, and there are 10 of the garments that can be borrowed by any visitor to the gallery to wear in their everyday life. So the garment becomes like a palimpsest because for each person that borrows it, the garment has a new 
story. Hemingway is an artist who, 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 who likes to defy what you expect of her. She um, was known for working in video and making films, um, but she's moved away from that because I think she felt that that's what people knew her for and she wanted to push somewhere else. More and more she's been creating installations and um, bringing together all these um, different materials. Um, she's just started painting as well, so it's the first time she's shown painting. But, but um, for the show, she's taken over two towers in this castle. Um, the, the tower and the gallery, and then also the monkey tower. And really for me, it's a palimpsest of um, a space that was uh, part of a castle, and particularly the round tower, which is from the 13th century then having all this kind of 21st century life put in it. Um, and, uh, and then down in the Monkey Tower, she's taken the carpet from the Round Tower. So this carpet had been used and used and used and turned it into the sculptural form. And then there's Nicole Eisenman, who is an artist from New York. Um, Nicole works in painting and also sculpture. And if you go into the garden, and hunt around, you'll find some sculptures that can be um, interactive with. And the artist Lynette Yadon has uh, painted three new um, works for us. And she uh, works from memory or from images that she finds. They're of figures, but they're never a painting of anyone. Um, and she paints them all in a day because she likes to, to work with, a, with, a, with wet paint. So they're these very um, kind of glimpses into, into time, um, a, a kind of parallel universe where you can't place the time. They could be now, they could be any time, they could be in the future. And um, it's like this idea of time outside of time that should be time. So among the, 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 the new artworks, the contemporary artworks, we've also got some archive um, pieces to, to, to kind of add other dimensions and other ways of thinking about the show. Um, we have a book um, from 1773, which um, we have open to a page of a map of, of Lismore that is finely detailed and, and has every single house in Lismore and the names of every single householder. Um, the rent they paid, who they were leasing it from. Um, it's such a fascinating document and, and it really um, uh, gives a sense of the, the town and, and how much it's changed and how much it stayed the same. Um, and it's really great for me because the, the show came from this one, so it's so great to have this one in the exhibition. There's also a watercolour from, uh, by Samuel Cook. Um, which, if you look closely on the road of the, in the painting, um, on the track, there's the shadow of a figure um, who Cook must have painted in and then decided to cross out. So it's like a palimpsest, it's a palimpsest of water. Um, then also we have some photographs of the crozier, which was discovered behind a doorway. Um, so this idea of how much the castle has changed and, and how the things that are now kind of deified were once shoved behind a doorway. Um, and then also we have images of the construction of, of one of the towers in 1895, and, um, a tower that looks way older than that, um, and also this kind of very rickety looking scaffold that doesn't anyone want to go up now. Um, we've also um, used voices collected by the pupils of the Blackwater school in town, um, who they uh, did a project of uh, speaking with relatives about Lismore and the memories of Lismore, their, their parents and grandparents. Um, the project was for the Artifice um, exhibition, but we brought them into um, Palimpsest and, and it's an hour's recording of um, different memories of, of, of life and what's changed and it's that idea that if 
these stories aren't recorded and these stories seem very simple. They're not necessarily complex histories, it's often about how people lived or how they ate. But if they're not recorded, they'll be forgotten. And it felt important to, to have these things remembered.